So uh, we've seen the Western media roll out these supposed witnesses. We, we saw the supposed Chinese police officer who ran away to Germany. And then every, every time he's interviewed, he's got his Chinese police uniform on, just in case you didn't believe he was a, actually a police officer. And you, you ask yourself, why the theatrics? You know, wh I mean, if he just claimed that he was a, a police officer and he saw these things in Xinjiang regarding the Uyghurs and this supposed genocide the West claims is going on in Xinjiang, uh, why can't he just tell a compelling story and provide evidence? Well, he can't. They have to make up for that with theatrics. And uh, I saw this older example here from the, the New York Times where they kind of did try to do that. Uh, this guy didn't dress up, pretend he was a police officer, but he, he claims he was this ethnic minority from, from Xinjiang who joined the police or the auxiliary police, although nobody can confirm that. And he said he did all of these things. So this was maybe the, the prototype for this latest stunt that they tried to pull that has already been completely discredited. The, the Xinjiang police officer from China has already been debunked. Uh, people were picking out details about his uniform and, and other details like that. But in reality, he told th com three completely different stories. He had the Uyghur tribunal in June uh, of this year, where he had a written statement that contradicted his spoken statement. And then his more recent, in, in October, his more recent interviews with CNN, uh, I think it was the Daily Mail and Sky News, uh, he told an entirely different story again. He, he was not involved with the torture. He was involved with the torture. He didn't even ask about sexual abuse and had no knowledge of it to des describing it in, in immense detail, uh, completely discredited. You, you have no proof to begin with that you did any of these things or saw any of these things. Plus your story keeps changing. So just clear him off the table. He is not a credible witness. Uh, but this, this was kind of a prototype to that. So you can see there's kind of like a little learning process taking place. So I'm going to go over this article and I'm going to show you how uh, back in 2019, this is 2021 now, I'm going to show you how they've been doing the same thing for, for literally years and how little evidence they've been able to provide. And they're not done yet. They're still putting out lies about forced labor, about genocide in Xinjiang. And for years, they have claimed that it has been going on on this astronomical scale involving millions of people. And yet they have not a single shred of evidence after years and years of talking about this. Uh, this would be like the, the weapons of mass destruction lie in Iraq if they didn't hurry up and just do their invasion, if they just let it linger for years making these claims and it just being so painfully obvious that they have no evidence. Uh, so let's let's get started with this 2019 New York Times article. Uh, so this is from the New York Times and he's saying he needed a job. China gave him one, locking up his fellow Muslims. China's vast attention program for Muslims has required more and more police officers and recruits are coming from the very ethnic groups that are being suppressed. Now at face value, this makes absolutely no sense. Uh, they're, they're supposedly genociding an entire group of people, and they're doing it by recruiting cadres of, of police and auxiliary police made up of the ethnic group they're trying to exterminate. Uh, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. Uh, and really what it is, is it's Xinjiang. Uh, 45% of the population are, are Uyghur, ethnic Uyghur, and so a, a large amount of the police force is going to consist of Uyghurs and, and other ethnic minorities and also Han Chinese. And uh, we don't know that this guy was actually doing any of this because there's zero evidence that he was. And the New York Times article doesn't provide us even a single shred of evidence that anything he said is true. Uh, so let's take a look at it. This is how New York Times writes their articles. They've got all of this all of these uh, narratives that they, they write, uh, but there's no, there's no evidence here. So he's saying he was asked to help bring 600 handcuffed people to a new facility and was stunned by what he saw. Officials called it a job training center, but it was basically a prison with toilets and beds behind bars. One detainee was an acquaintance he barely recognized because he had lost so much weight. And the thing that the New York Times continuously 
leaves out throughout this entire article is any evidence that any of this is true, that this is actual news and not just some made up story by uh, a Western backed activist or network of activists uh, deliberately churning out anti-China propaganda, propaganda that is untrue or baseless or unverified. The Chinese government has detained as, a, as many as a million ethnic Uyghurs, Kazakhs, and other Muslim minorities in a network of indoctrination ca camps across Xinjiang, provoking international condemnation. And no, no, it hasn't. It's provoked condemnation from the US and its allies, and that's it. And everyone else says they don't even believe this is going on, including virtually every Muslim majority country on earth. Uh, but let's see, when you go to this link, it brings you to this article, okay? China is detaining Muslims in, in vast numbers, the goal, transformation. And uh, what, where, where's the, where's the source of this actually happening? So, so here, the number of Uyghurs as well as Kazakhs and other Muslim minorities who have been detained in the camps is unclear. So we don't know. Estimates range from several hundred thousand to perhaps a million. And if you go to this perhaps a million, it brings you to this, this other New York Times article. So now we're, we're three articles in and we still haven't seen the evidence of a million Uyghurs in, in these camps, any evidence of that. And the source is Adrian Zen's uh, China Human Rights Defenders, uh, Human Rights Watch, all of these fake human rights groups that have been discredited, not, not just in relation to China, but pretty much everything else. And uh, we've already gone over all of these sources and we have proven that their claims are completely baseless. I just did a video detailing a 20 page report put out by Adrian Zenz titled, uh, Course of Labor in Xinjiang. And I showed how there is literally zero evidence of course of labor in Xinjiang. As a matter of fact, the evidence Adrian Zenz presents confirms that there is no coerced labor in Xinjiang, that uh, potential laborers, when approached by the government for work details, uh, they have the option of saying no, and the government will actually leave a village with its quotas unfulfilled. And then I have to come back and repeat the recruitment process all over again. That's not course of labor. If you have the option of saying no, it's not course of labor. So this is what the Western media has been doing for years now in regards to Xinjiang, simply making these accusations. And then as I showed you, you, you just keep clicking and clicking and clicking and you never get to the source where they confirm that a million Uyghurs are locked up somewhere. So uh, we'll go back to the first article um, again off on a tangent, we're talking about some guy who claims he was an ethnic minority in, in Xinjiang locking up other ethnic minorities. So let's let's continue with that, that claim. So absolutely no evidence of this. In doing so, it has vastly expanded the security apparatus. Okay, so usually, if you're being honest, you will say that in Xinjiang, there was horrific terrorism. There was violence, there were riots, there were terrorist attacks. It was killing scores of people at a time, hundreds if not thousands of people a year, and not just in Xinjiang, but all across China. And then by 2015, there was a bombing in Bangkok linked to Uyghur extremists. And at the same time, thousands of Uyghur extremists were streaming into Syria to fight alongside ISIS and Al Qaeda. So there, there was definitely a very real terrorist problem, an immense terrorist problem. What nation on earth would not increase security in a region where this sort of terrorism was emanating from? Uh, common sense, but the New York Times isn't going to give you that context because if they did, none of this would seem out of the ordinary, uh, uh, beefing up security in a place where horrific terrorism is unfolding. So they're saying the rapid buildup has relied in large part on recruitment of officers from the same ethnic minorities that the authorities have targeted, dividing communities and families while forcing people like Mr. Baimurat to confront difficult choices. And so uh, he was offered employment and he took it. There was no coercion here. He, out of his own free will, decided to do this, allegedly. There's no evidence that he actually did this. Uh, but. That's the story we're being told. So there was no, there was no coercion. He, if he did this, he did this on his own free will. He's not claiming that he was forced to do this. Mr. Bai Murat, who goes by only one name, said he decided to speak out because he regretted working for the police. This was uh, outside Urumqi. 
uh, the regional capital. He also described how close he came to ending up in a camp himself. And he says he had an obligation because he saw so many people suffering. And yet uh, all of that time he was doing this, he collected no physical evidence of any of this. In several interviews, though, uh, Mr. Bayrumat, description of his experience has remained consistent. So <clears throat> they're saying, they're saying uh, a foreign ministry spokeswoman of China confirms that uh, he worked in security in, in Xinjiang uh, in the months he, des he described, but uh, he was employed by a shopping center, not the police. And they're saying that these are all lies. So that's where the New York Times had a perfect opportunity to offer up evidence that he wasn't lying, and yet they didn't. So it's China says, this guy says, this random guy that the New York Times dug up, uh, obviously cannot verify any of the details of his, his story and don't even have the integrity to mention in their article that none of this can be verified. So, so just keep all of that in mind as we continue. Since going public last month, Mr. Bai Murat has received anonymous telephone calls warning that his relatives in China would be placed into camps if he did not recant. Uh, and so this is another activist uh, who helps ethnic Kazakhs from Xinjiang. And this is a familiar theme that they all, they all say, they all claim. Half the time their relatives who they claim are being locked up in detention facilities turn up alive, well, prospering in Xinjiang and simply not, not interested in associating with these people who left the country and who are involved in an obvious foreign-backed campaign to destabilize the region. And these activists, the New York Times will never tell you, are all separatists. And we'll get into that in just a moment. So let's just continue. So they're saying uh, he was in Kazakhstan in 2009, but he returned to Xinjiang. He tried to uh, start his own business and it failed. And then he got this new job in security. He claims the police in 2017 and he said it was a good salary. So no, no coercion, no, no forced labor, no meager wages. He was paid well and he did this out of his own free will, allegedly. His task included examining travelers' vehicles and IDs at police checkpoints on major roads. He focused on people, on government watch lists, searching their mobile phones for content considered subversive. And again, the New York Times isn't going to tell you what was going on in that region when, when these security measures were put into place. There were uh, Uyghur extremists chopping people up. Ordinary people just walking around, minding their own business. They would just, in groups, walk up to uh, a crowded area and just start chopping people into pieces or blowing themselves up in the middle of a market or attacking a train station or driving their car into a crowded market and killing people. This is what was going on in Xinjiang. So it wasn't like China just woke up one day and said, we don't, suddenly we don't like Uyghurs. Let's crack down on them. No, there was, there was real terrorism that they were responding to. The New York Times leaves this out, uh, but as I pointed out many times before, there's older Western media articles like this one from the BBC from 2014. Uh, why is there tension between China and the Uyghurs? And they don't really honestly answer that, but they do give a long detailed list of all of the terrorism that was taking place. They were hijacking planes. Uh, they were... Uh, opening fire, coordinated attacks, uh, m mobs armed with knives, uh, uh, paragraph after paragraph, uh, scores at a time being killed by these extremists uh, spanning several years. So that, that's what was going on. The New York Times, by, by not including that context, is being incredibly dishonest to its audience. The authorities responded to that rioting with a security crackdown. Uh, where, where on earth would they not respond to rioting with a security crackdown? Look at what the U.S. did following uh, what happened in Washington. And in Washington, in, in January this year, the, the only person that, that was killed uh, by somebody else was a protester killed by security. Point blank, they were unarmed and they were shot dead by Capitol Security. Uh, so, again, there's these deadly attacks were blamed on Uyghur separatists who embrace radical Islam. The government appointed a new regional leader in 2016 who tightened. So notice how they're telling you how horrible everything is. And then they, in a very downplayed way, introduce 
the the notion that there might have been a real threat taking place now this is where they this is where they substitute a lack of verification in this this witness's story with uh things that are supposed to look like real evidence so that was when recruitment of auxiliary office officers like mr Baimurat took off according to james Leibold and adrian zenz and so these are these are two sources repeatedly discredited over and over again by 2017, Xinjiang's police forces were more than five times the size it had been a decade earlier. Again, there was horrible terrorism taking place. Of course, the police force would, would expand. So again, this is the New York Times not giving you any context as to why this was going on and making it sound unreasonable, like it was just uh, a evil dictatorship, uh, irrationally just picking out and picking on an ethnic minority in their country that, that had up until then lived side by side with everyone else for generations. And then they're talking about decades of uh, migration by Han, China's dominant ethnic group have transformed Xinjiang, fueling Uyghur ang anxieties, and this, this is not true. And I'm, I'm gonna show you what was really fueling the divide. And again, this comes from the Western media, uh, but from older articles, they never talk about this now because they know if they talked about this now, then everything that China is doing would make perfect sense. So here's from the LA Times, 2016. Uh, in China, rise of Salafism fosters suspicion and division among Muslims. And what they're talking about in this article is Saudi state-sponsored Wahhabism or Salafism. It's a politically motivated perversion of Islam. It is radical, it is extremist. And what they use this for is to transform regions uh, of Muslim majority areas uh, into kind of a political weapon directed by Saudi Arabia who controls Salafism. And what they were doing was dumping millions of dollars into Xinjiang, uh, building up uh, schools to, to basically brainwash Uyghur Muslims so that they abandon the, the version of Islam that they practiced for generations and adopted this extremist strain sponsored and controlled by Saudi Arabia. And this is what they did in Afghanistan to expel the Soviets. It's what they did in Syria to try to overthrow the Syrian government, the Saudis with US backing. And then this is exactly what they were doing in Xinjiang. And so this is what China has been trying to undo for years now. That's what this is all actually really about. And so when they talk about uh, Islam, the practice of Islam in Xinjiang, they're actually talking about uh, China up rooting Salafism, Saudi state-sponsored Salafism, which was the, the real cultural genocide. Salafi, Salafism, sponsored by Saudi Arabia, was trying to overwrite the indigenous practice of Islam, uh, practiced by Uyghurs for generations. That was the original, actual cultural genocide. China was reversing it. And so let's, let's continue with this uh, New York Times article. So that's their excuse, but that's not true. And again, no, no evidence at all to substantiate any of this, except they, they just trust that you, you think the New York Times is credible. Many Uyghurs and Kazakhs complain they have been left out of growth and face discrimination in hiring, along with stifling restrictions on their practice of Islam. So there you go. They're not going to qualify what they mean by that. But as a matter of fact, the only restrictions on a practice of Islam in China is if you're practicing Saudi state-sponsored Wahhabism, Salafism. It is extremist. It is radical. It spurs people to go out and kill people. And when these people were brainwashed, into Saudi-sponsored Salafism, it wasn't because they were upset with Beijing's uh, policies. Uh, they were just extremists in general. They would go out and target anybody they thought were practicing an impure version of Islam or people who weren't practicing Islam at all. That's why they would travel to Syria and fight alongside ISIS and Al-Qaeda because it was about what they thought was jihad and martyrdom, not, not any specific political cause. Uh, and again, the New York Times completely omits this context. So here we go. Chinese officials quoted in state media have praised the contributions of minority police officers, but those who join the security forces are often viewed with suspicion by both the authorities and their own community. So who's, who are they going to quote to give us some insight on this? Uh, Dilsat Raset, and he's a Uyghur activist in Germany. But that's not what he is. He's not a Uyghur activist in Germany. He is the, um, he is the according to their own Facebook website here, he is the spokesman 
for the Germany-based World Uyghur Congress, but even though it's based in Germany, it's actually funded by the US government through the National Endowment for Democracy. It's the World Uyghur Congress right here. It's listed and how much money in US dollar amounts they get from the US government on an annual basis. Now, if you go to the World Uyghur's official website, you will notice that they uh, include the flag of East Turkestan. So this, this is not a human rights organization concerned about Uyghurs in Xinjiang. This is a politically motivated separatist organization that seeks to carve Xinjiang off of China, uh, transform it into East Turkestan, uh, some sort of independent Islamic state, basically. And uh, if you come down here, they even admit that they're, uh, an they're an opposition movement against Chinese occupation of East Turkestan. To, to give you an idea of how disconnected their, their mission is from actual reality, and this is a separatist organization, the U.S. government is openly funding. Okay, so they are, the U.S. government is openly funding separatism inside of China in violation of the U.N. Charter. New York Times isn't going to tell you that, that little bit about this guy they're quoting. And then here's another one, uh, Tahir Inman, uh, a Uyghur activist in Washington, again, part of this, this network of sep literal separatists backed and funded and supported by the US government. The New York Times never mentions that. And so they're saying there are big problems between Uyghur police and ordinary people. People hate them and consider them as traitors, call them dogs of Chinese. So the only people that would do that are people who are separatists, who believe that Xinjiang should be East Turkestan and buy into this extremist movement trying to carve off territory from China and fully backed by the US. And again, this context is not provided by the New York Times. And so here's uh, Mr. Bilash, a Kazakh activist and ethnic Kaz and uh, said ethnic Kazakhs who fled Xinjiang do not hold Mr. Bai Murat's work for the police against him. Uh, why should they? They can't even verify that he was actually doing this. They can't even verify that he was actually doing this. Nowhere in the New York Times article do they verify that anything he said is true. He says the uh, worst experience was bringing people to the internment camp. The government presents the camps as part of a vocational training campaign that steers Muslims away from religious extremism and has halted violence. And this is demonstrably true. The, the violence has stopped and these people are rejoining society after being brainwashed by Saudi-sponsored Salafism. They have rejoined society. They are working side by side, everybody else. They've gotten rid of their, their extremist habits and beliefs, and now they can function in society again, um, as opposed to what's going on in, say, Syria, where they have entire towns in northern Syria still overrun by these extremists who have, like, Sharia courts uh, punishing people and uh, chopping people's heads off. Uh, that's what would have happened to Xinjiang if China wasn't able to regain control. And then uh, former inmates, however, say the uh, authorities hold people without charge and force them to renounce their religious beliefs. Yes, if you're, if you're a Salafist brainwashed by Saudi state-sponsored Wahhabism, then that's probably how you're going to feel. Uh, there have been people who have gone through the camps and uh, they were deprogrammed. And they're very thankful for that and they feel kind of embarrassed about their system of beliefs when, when they were radicalized. The New York Times isn't going to tell you about those stories. Evidence has also emerged that the camps are operating a system of forced labor, and I, I have completely debunked that. Many other people have completely debunked that, and I, I have an entire video, an hour long, about Adrian Zen's 20-page report about forced labor in Xinjiang, uh, admitting, his own paper admitting, there is zero evidence this is taking place, and that the only thing he can say is that there is a risk of coerced labor. He says it's a high risk, but he never... Uh, qualifies what he means by high risk. Like, what is the criteria between low, medium, and high? He never says, because he's just making stuff up, clearly. Mr. Bay Murat had another reason to lament his return. The authorities discovered he had lived in Kazakhstan and obtained citizenship there. In recent years, the police have come to regard foreign ties as grounds for suspicion, of course, 
because the extremism and radicalization that was taking place in Xinjiang was foreign sponsored, uh, primarily by Saudi Arabia. Turkey played a role in it and the United States played a role in it. And they have operatives working in neighboring countries like Kazakhstan uh, to help promote this extremism and radicalization. And when these extremists leave Xinjiang, legally, they, go, they walk through the border. And even this guy walked through the border past police. Nobody detained him. He was able to go to Kazakhstan. And then he, when he's in Kazakhstan, he does stuff like this to undermine China, to attack and undermine China. And here, the New York Times, they, they closed the article, this unverified account that they pass off as news by saying uh, eventually he, he didn't have his passport and yet he was still able to get across the border uh, with travel documents provided by a Kazakh official. And at the border, the police questioned his family, including his young children, for hours before letting them through. So either this guy is telling us a lie or the Chinese government is not nearly as oppressive and their system of oppression is not nearly as efficient as we're being told it is, even, even in this New York Times article itself. So again, here's another smear by the Western media, a completely unverified story filed as a news report by the New York Times. Um, a, a real journalist, ask yourself, a real journalist gets a story, they cannot verify any part of it, uh, claims that they make about one million Uyghurs being, being detained, uh, you, you click on it, it brings you to another article. You click on it, it brings you to another article. And ultimately, there is no evidence that that's true. What is this? Is this actual journalism or is this propaganda dressed up as journalism? And I think anyone who remembers how the New York Times uh, lied the public, helped lie the public into the Iraq war in 2003, uh, the US interventions in Syria and Libya from 2011 onward, and the way they covered up the US and its backing of extremists in Syria for years before finally admitting that, that they were behind that, uh, you will know that this is not news. This is propaganda. And that's why I have to go through it and break it down for you. Because uh, if you read this and you don't know any of this background, this context that the New York Times deliberately omits to, to make their propaganda more effective, uh, you might be misled into thinking that this is evidence of something going on in China that isn't actually happening. So uh, I will keep an eye on this. Uh, if you thought this video was useful, please like and share it. Think about subscribing. It helps the channel grow and it's totally free to do. Check the video description for all the links that I reference. I'm going to put uh, everything in there and you can look at it yourself. Read that LA Times article from 2016. Read the BBC uh, paragraph after paragraph after paragraph of horrible terrorist attacks in Xinjiang before this, you know, the crackdown. And you ask yourself what else China could have possibly have done to deal with this. And, uh, and then think about how dishonest these accounts are when they, when they present it without that context. Uh, also in the video description are ways you can help support my work. To everyone who has been supporting my work, whether it's through Patreon month to month, or uh, one-time donations, or even if you're just helping share my work with others. I could not do this work without that support, so thank you. And as always, thank you for watching.